In my small shop, one of the things that's really important to me is keeping my sharpening gear ready to go so that I don't have to stop in the middle of a process, set up all the sharpening stuff, sharpen the tools, and then get back to work. I wanna just be able to take care of my edge tools and be able to keep working. Now the trick is being able to do that means setting up a dedicated space. For that, I have this sharpening box. And as you'll see, it has everything that I need and is actually the sharpening workstation itself. Because the top of it has a hardboard panel covered with like stair tread tape. So it's a rubberized surface that's non-slip. And as you can see, it's a nice height for me to be able to sharpen tools in a good controlled place and body position so that I can see what I'm doing. But there's more going on here and we'll start by opening up the various layers here. For starters, the top can actually be flipped upside down so that the tread tape that was on the top surface now turns into a non-slip surface for on the bench top. And I have a tray here that can kind of contain all the sharpening debris or oil that would fall off the stones or water even if I were using water stones. So it's a handy item on its own, but it conceals the first layer of my sharpening box. And I'm just gonna walk you through the various supplies that I have inside. So we'll start here at this back larger compartment. I have a rag here just to keep things clean, a bar of uh, the Lee Valley Veritas honing compound. It's this green crayon kind of thing that you use for uh, stropping or honing the inside edges of tools. I have my uh, burnishing tool for sharpening scrapers a small engineer square to check the squareness of blades. Uh, they don't make these anymore, but the WD-40 lubricating pen is kind of handy in there. And then I also have a piece of plywood cut at a 45 degree. I use this as a guide for sharpening the scraper blade in my cabinet scraper. And then finally, a wee little box wrench that I use for taking off the arms on my spoke shape blade. And I need to do that every time I sharpen, so that's why it lives here. Moving forward is a block with a kerf in it that I use for sharpening uh, card scraper blades. I've done another video on that. Uh, this middle section holds these really cool diamond sharpening paddles in all the very scientific grits from coarse to medium, fine, and super fine. And then, just because I had been playing around with it for a while, I have a few of the syringes of diamond paste. So these are all in different uh, grits based on microns of the diamond particle size and they're color coded. The front one has a couple of hardwood dowels that I have that honing compound on that I use to uh, remove the wire edge on the inside of some of my carving gouges, the round carving gouges, and that'll fit right in there. And then I also have a pair of slip stones that I can use again for honing and touching up the inside curved profiles of my carving tools. As you can see, there's actually a lot that you can pack into this box. Now the bottom layer holds the tools that I use the most often. So in the front part here, I have my Lee Valley uh, honing guide. I have the standard bottom clamp and then also a side clamping one for taking care of the narrow tools like chisels and things like that. And then this main part has the sharpening stone. So I use oil stones because I have a shop out in my garage and I don't wanna worry about the stones freezing and cracking. So I have a medium India stone, which is actually a synthetic stone, but of a medium, medium grit. And then I also have a hard white translucent Arkansas stone that I use for the final surface. When I need to go a little coarser to clean up edges or reshape something that got nicked, then I have a two-sided 
diamond stone. So it's a 300 grit on one side and a thousand on the other. And that works really well, like I said, for some of the heavy duty work that needs to be done. Earlier I talked about using uh, diamond paste and that was a little experiment that we did around here. So I have these MDF blocks that are coated again by the micron size of the diamond particles. So you just squirt a little of the diamond paste on there and then begin rubbing the tool around and the diamond paste embeds in the surface of the MDF, which is super flat, and then you can do your sharpening on there. So if I really need a extra fine edge, then that's what I'll go to. And then the final bit here in the box is a piece of white oak that I glued a strip of leather to, and I used that as a strop. So you can see more of that a uh, green honing compound on there. So that'll put the final edge on tools that I'm using for the final surface. So not every chisel or gouge that I use needs to be polished up to the highest level. But when they do, uh, I'll, I'll take it right here. And this is where I also maintain a lot of my carving tools that I can just come through here periodically and uh, stroke them on the strop and then that'll keep them at a high level of sharpness. So as you can see, it's a really cool, pretty spacious box that will hold quite a bit of sharpening gear. And it doesn't have to be this particular set. Every woodworker is a little bit different, so your equipment will vary. But with these removable dividers, you can mix and match the compartments to whatever you wanna do. Um, if you wanna make one of these for yourself, you can see it's made from half inch Baltic birch plywood joined with box joints all the way down. So it has a kind of a fun graphic punch to it as well as being super strong. The plans for this sharpening box are at woodsmithplans.com and you'll be able to make one for yourself and then keep your edge tools honed and ready to go.